Okay, this is your stat sensei, Mr. Spensei, and this is also working on that classical probability problem. Uh, we've already done the first page, the first front and back, so we're on to the second page. So this is where we're beginning with scenario one. The HEB purchases salmon fillets from only two distributors, one in Alaska and the other in Chile. The distribution of fillet links, so Alaska is approximately normal with a mean of 21.3 and a standard deviation of 1.2. A randomly selected fillet that comes from Alaska has a probability of 0.325 of uh, being greater than 21.3 inches. Now notice this is it comes from Alaska and a length greater than 21.3. So this looks like it has two variables. It looks like it has the location and size. The distribution from Chile's salmon fillets have a probability of 0.358 of being less than 21.3. So once again, we have size and we have location that being chilly. Um, um, Sixty-eight percent of the salmon fillets are provided by, by the distributor from Chile, and the rest are from Alaska. So in this case, we the sixty-eight percent looks like it's predicated on only one variable, and that is the location. Turns out this is from Chile. So basically, we have two locations. We have Chile and Alaska. And the uh, chance that it's from Chile is 0.68. The chance that it's from Alaska is 1 minus 0.68 or 0.32. We know that this is 1.0 always. So I'm going to go ahead and write these small. And there we go. We have them written all, all down small. All right, so a randomly selected, and this right here was size, and our size is greater than 21.3 and less than 21.3, okay? So a randomly selected fillet that comes from Alaska, so we're looking at the Alaska call, it has a probability of 0.325 of being greater than 21.3. So this is going to have the 0.325. This is going to be 1 minus 0.325. All right. And I don't really have enough room to write that. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate it. 1 minus 0.325 is 0.675. And all I did was 1 minus that. All right. Um, Chili salmon flays have a probability of 0.358 of being less than 21.3. Uh, so this is less than from Chile and less than. So it's going to go right here. So this is 0.358. And this will be 1 minus the 0.358. And that is 0.642. All right, when I multiply all this stuff out, and I'm going to need to keep a bunch of decimal places with this. So 0 0.43656, 0 0.24344. And all I'm doing is multiplying the values in, in each square. This is 0 0.104, and this is 0 0.216. And remember this plus this equals this, this plus this equals this. And then we add across and we get 0. 0.54056 and 0. 0.45944. So these two sum to give me that one. All right, so now I'm building my table. It says, what's the probability? What percent of the ATB fillets are less than 21.3 inches? So all I care about is not where they're coming from, is I just care about there being less than 21.3. That's this value right here. So the probability that they are less than 21.3 equals 0.45944, all right? If an HEB salmon fillet, and this keyword if means given, 
comes from Alaska. So given that it came from Alaska, what's the probability that it's more than 21.3? So intersection over given. The given is, and again, that keyword is uh, if. The given is that they came from Alaska, 0.32. So I'm looking in the Alaska column. What's the probability they're greater than 21.3? So this is my intersection. This is the Alaska intersect greater than 0 0.213, 0 0.104. That looks great for work shown. And then I'll find out that that answer is 0 0.325, right? What is the probability of randomly selected HBP fillet comes from Alaska and is less than 21.3? This isn't conditioned on anything, but we have and, which means we're looking for the overlap, all right? So we're looking for the intersection of the two, and we can just pull that straight out of the table, which is 0.2434. And once again, that's the probability of chili or chili intersect less than 21.3. All right, equals the 0.2434. Three, four, four. Once again, Chile intersect. All right. What percent of the HEB salmon fillets are more than 20.1.3 or are from Alaska? All right. So greater than 21.3 or, well, gosh, now they just asked me to use a general addition rule. Remember, the general addition rule is the probability of A union B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. So they're asking, what's the probability percent are more than 21.3? All right. So more than 21.3 is 0. 0.54056. That's what we're looking for there. That offers 1.54056 plus they have to be from Alaska. Well, what percent are from Alaska? 0.32. Here's where we have to be really careful. All right. They had to be from Alaska and they had to be greater than this. Or, or they had to be greater than this, I need to make sure I subtract out my overlap. My overlap is 0 0.104. And when I do that, if I did all my math correctly, which is questionable at this time of morning, equals 0 0.75656. All right. So that's the probability that they are from Alaska or um, greater than 21.3, or actually greater than 21.3 or from Alaska. Subtract out the intersection, and this is what I get. All right, next problem. The number of points scored in a game has a probability distribution below, and that means I have a 50% chance of getting zero, 30% chance of getting one, and a 20% chance of getting a 2. And if I sum those together, 0. 0.5 plus 0. 0.3 is 0. 0.8 plus 0. 0.2 is 1 whole, valid probability distribution. The number of points obtained in one game is independent of the number of points obtained in a second game. That's important because they're telling me that they're independent, which means I can multiply. They also told me I'm playing this game twice, which means I'm going to, the fact that I have to do it a second time um, tells me that I'm going to have to um, set up a two-way table, all right? I'm going to have to draw that sample space. So my sample space is simply this. I can get a 0, 0 for the first game, a 0, and then a 1, a 0, and a 2. And what that means is I got 0 in the first game, 0 in the second, 0 in the first, 1 in the second, 0 in the first, 2 in the second. Or I can get a 1, 0, a 1, 1, a 1, 2, a 2 0, a 2 1, and a 2 2. All right. And when I look at that, the max, the fewest points I could end up with is 0 plus 0 is 0. And I know I need to add them because they said sum. 
and two plus two is four, so there we go, all right? If Y represents the sampling distribution, uh, what is the probability that the sum is two? Well, that means I don't care about anything except when the sum is two, which means I care about these, zero, two, one, one, and two, zero. Well, zero, um, zero comma one, well, the probability of getting a zero is 0 0.5. And the probability of getting a 1 is 0 0.3. And then I also have 1, 1. And the probability of getting a 1 is 0 0.3. But I need two of them. And 0 0.3. And then the other way I can get it is a 2, 0. And the probability of getting a two is 0.2. The probability of getting a zero is 0.5. So this becomes 0.5 times 0.3. Uh, did I do that right? 0.5 times 0.3, yes, I did. Oh, I'm sorry. Not a zero one. This is a zero two. So this has to be a point two. There we go. Because it has to sum to two. That sums to two. That sums to two. That sums to two. Zero two. So point five times point two is point one zero. Oh. Point three times point three is point oh nine. And point two times point five is point one zero. Oh. Sum those together, and we end up getting 0.29. So the probability that I would score two points in this game is 0.29 if I played it twice. And once again, it's the 0, 2, the 1, 1, and the 2, 0. Again, if they say, if they tell you that you're playing a game twice, you need to set up the sample space, and that takes a little bit of practice. All right, here we go. The land of Nod is populated by all sorts of interest, interesting creatures. Among them is the goblin, in order to attract uh, mates, goblin slobber sometimes as much as a gallon today. That's beautiful. Trade is embedded in the genetic makeup of the goblin, and the gene is carried by both male and female goblins. 95% of little goblins carry the slobbering gene. If, uh oh, that just told me that this is conditioned, all right? They carry the gene if the biological mother carries the gene. In addition, it is known that 85% of adult females carry the slobbering gene. All right. So this one had a condition. This one just said, hey, 85% of the females carry the gene. In the land of Nod, the genetic trait of slobbering randomly appears in 25% of the little goblins. All right, in which the female parent does not carry the gene. We need to pay attention, does not. But in other, in other words, the kid carries it and the parent does not. So our one variable is known that 85% of adult females carry the slobbering gene. All right, so we have females slobber, mom slobbers, here, mom slobbers, mom not slobbering. How beautiful a thought is that? So this is 0.85. This is one minus 0.85, which is 0.15. So this is one whole. Writing this small, 0 0.85, 0 0.85, 0 0 0.15, 0 0.15. All right. Um, this trait is embedded in the genetic makeup of the goblin. The gene is carried by both male and female. 95% of little goblins carry the slobbering gene. Oh, kids slobber, kids not slobbering. 95% of little goblins carry it if the biological mother carries it. So kids slobbers and mom slobbers it. It happens to be 0.95. Hold on for just a moment while I organize paperwork over here. 
All right. So 0.95. 1 minus 0.95, 1 minus that gives me 0 0.05. And then we have in the land genetic, um, in 25% of the little goblins in which the female does not slobber. So basically, kids slobber, mom does not slobber. 1 minus 0.95 is 0.75. All right, so I've gone ahead and multiplied this times this, and I get 0 0.8075. This times this gives me 0 0.0375. Sum them together, and I get 0 0.845. This times this, 0 0.0425. And remember this plus this equals this. So multiply these two together, and I get 0.1125. This plus this equals 0.155. And this plus this should equal that. All right? So we're all checked out. It says, what proportion of little goblins in the land of Nod do not carry the slobbering gene? All right. Kid not slobbering gene, 0.155 right there. Probability that the kid not slobbering equals 0.155. What's the likelihood that a randomly selected adult female does not carry the gene and her little little, um, little, little gobbling offering does not carry? And means intersection. All right, female does not carry. So mom uh, not slobbering and her little gobbling um, offering carries. So mom not Mom not slobbering and kid carries, all right? So we want the probability of mom not slobbering and kid slobbering equals this intersection right here. Kid slobbering, mom not slobbering. The next thing, uh, what proportion of little goblins have the slobbering uh, gene or a biological mother who has a slobbering gene. This is really important because this tells me I'm looking at the general addition rule. Probability of A union B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Once again, what clued me off for that is the word or says, hey, general addition rule. And have what's probably little goblins have the slobbering gene, or the mom has the slobbering gene. So, the probability the kid has the slobbering gene 0.845. Probability the mom has the slobbering gene is 0.85. But remember. We have to subtract out the intersection. So the intersection of mon slobbering and kid slobbering is 0 0.8075, which is right here. And when we do our addition and subtraction, we end up getting 0 All right, given that a randomly select little goblin has the slobbering gene, so we know we're working with a given, so it means we're working with given and intersection. So we're given the kid has the slobbering gene. Well, what's the probability the kid has the slobbering gene? 0 0.0845 or 0 0.845. So that's the probability the kid has a gene. What's the likelihood that the mom also has a gene? So kid has the gene, mom has the gene. So the intersection is 0 0.8075. All right, and that just came from mom having the gene. That intersection equals 0.9556. All right, so that takes care of that one. And then the next thing, given the probabilities 
M equals 0.6 and M union D equals 0.65. What's the probability of D if M and D are mutually exclusive? So here's what they're saying. They're talking about the general addition rule. The probability of M union D equals the probability of M plus the probability of D minus the probability of M and D. Now they told us something. First off, let's plug in what we have. M union D is 0.65. We know that M is 0.6. We're looking for D, but they told us that they were mutually exclusive. Well, if they're mutually exclusive, that means there's no overlap, which means this is zero. All right, that means that's zero. And when I solve, I end up getting 0 0.05 equals D and I'm done with that one. All right, given the probability of M equals 0.3 and MUD equals 0.7, what's the probability D if M and D are independent? Wow, so once again, Let's write down our probability rule, probab our general addition rule. Probability of M union D equals the probability of M plus the probability of D minus the probability of M and D. All right, but they told me M and D are independent. And because M and D are independent, probability of M and D equals the probability of M times the probability of D. They didn't tell me what the and is and that we don't know what D is, but we know that M is point is is point three. So the probability of M and D equals point three D. So I can substitute this in right there. And so I'm going to start plugging in what I know. I know that this is 0. 0.7 equals M plus D minus 0. 0.3D. Well, I also know that M is 0. 0.3, so I can plug that in. Let me rewrite this. So 0. 0.7 equals M is 0. 0.3 plus D minus the substitution of 0. 0.3D. Subtracting 0. 0.3 from both sides, I end up getting 0. 0.4 equals D minus 0. 0.3D. This is like having a 1. So 0. 0.4 equals 0. 0.7D. Divide both sides by 0.7. So 0.4 over 0.7 equals D. So 4 sevenths equals D. All right. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you on the next one.